This conference will now be recorded. All right, so great. Um, so we will take a look at the rest of the topics. Yesterday we were taking a look at um, an ADT message type and what are the segments involved in an ADT message type. And we were also working on, uh, we did take a look at the first segment, which is MSH segment. We did go through the, uh, in, go through the details of each and every field that is important. And uh, we completed the MSH segment. So today we will take a look at uh, rest of the segments, which are part of an ADT message. And then we will go from there. Okay, so any questions from yesterday's session? Well, it's, it's clear actually yesterday. Okay. okay, great. All right, so we'll take a look at the next segment, which is as part of our uh, ADT A04 or ADT A28, basically in a demographic message. So the first one, uh, so the next one is EVN segment. EVN is event segment. Usually this is used um, just to indicate the event type. Uh, whatever we send in MSH9 uh, will indicate the message type, which is ADT A04 or ADT A28 and so on. Uh, whereas EVN segment will just indicate the event type uh, which is which will be MSH 9.1 usually 9.2 usually so we'll have it as a, a 04 or a 08 a 28 s 12 s 15 s 14 or whatever the event that we are dealing with so even one will have event type code and then even two will have a recorded date and time so which means when that message got generated uh, we have the same date and time in MSH 7 as well MSH 7 as message generation date time right date and time of the message uh, of when it got generated the same thing is present in EVN 2 as well so EVN you might not see EVN everywhere uh, in all the messages at times you will see you you may see that EVN is not present at all uh, not only with demographics but also with other message types EVN segment is present at times um, and uh, at times you might not see it. So really it doesn't depend on any um, standard, but it's just that uh, in the pre in the real time scenarios, in the practical scenarios, uh, few clients use it, few don't use it. So the next segment is PID segment. So as the name itself suggests, it is used for patient identification. So whatever we have in the whatever the fields uh, that have that identifies a patient, whatever the data elements that identifies a patient details uh, like name, gender, date of birth, email address, mailing address, and all of these things are in are present in the PID segment itself. Okay. So PID segment has uh, uh, many fields. So the first one is called patient set ID. Uh, sorry, first one is called set ID, which is PID one. Set ID is nothing but a sequence ID. So it indicates the sequence number of that particular segment. Uh, let us say if we have PID segments repeating in a message. Why will we get a repeating message? That's a different scenario altogether. Uh, when we deal with uh, query response related interfaces or when we are dealing with uh, patient query on immunization registry interfaces, we do get responses with multiple PID segments. So that's a different workflow, different story altogether. But uh, in case if there is any segment which is repeating in the HL7 message, then you will see that the first field of that particular segment will indicate the sequence number. So let me show it with an example. Let us say, for example, this is an HL7 message, and in this message, there are more than one PID segment. 
okay so in a scenario of this kind this pid1 field will indicate the set id of these pid segments one by one in that way set id will always act as a sequence number not only with uh, our uh, pid segment but also for other segments we do have set ids there are only few segments which don't have set id but for all the segments wherever the set id is present they usually represent the sequence number okay and next we have pid 2 3 and 4 just give me one minute guys so next we have a pid 2 3 and 4 which is uh, to show up the patient identifier uh, so you might ask me a question why do we have three fields to show or to send patient id so these three fields have their own importance in uh, in storing the or in sending the patient id basically so let us take up a scenario here to understand it better All right, so let us take up a scenario here where uh, we have a central PM repository and uh, we have many EHR systems over the cert over a particular region. And all the patients who get registered are registered within that PM system. And then the demographic message will be sent over to uh, all the different EHR systems down the line okay um, so in such scenario let us say first of all let us say they haven't had a pm software at all let us take up a hospital and uh, assume that there was no pm system at all okay and they were maintaining the mrn number basically the medical record number which they generated manually with some combination like um, location name uh, in the MRN number they might have a prefix of the location or suffix of the location and they generate a sequence number for a patient so now let us suppose that they have acquired a PM system first they haven't had any software system at all to store the patient details so they have acquired a PM system which is a uh, which is a software system to register patients in their system so they started registering the patients but when you use the pm system they generate an id of their own they generate a unique id of their own the software itself generates the patient id however practice also wants to use the old um, old convention of using their mrn number whenever a patient is getting registered in the pm system okay so at that point of time we'll see that there will be another field within the pm software which will store this mrn number as well as they keep generating the id that has been assigned by the pm system okay so we'll end up in having two different ids altogether one is uh, an id generated by the pm system and another one is an um, an MRN number which got which was generated by the hospital itself so this is one scenario where you can think of having multiple patient IDs for single patient and each of them have their own significance which is why uh, to handle or to whenever or to send ADT messages whenever we have scenarios of this kind with all the IDs present we have more than one field where the MRN number is stored or the patient ID is stored. So PID 2, 3 and 4, all the three are used to send the patient IDs and MRN numbers. But in case if we have only one patient ID that is usually sent in PID 3. PID 3 is a dedicated field for sending patient identifiers. Next we have PID 5. PID 5 is uh, patient name 
as the name itself suggests uh, we'll have the entire patient name here it could be first name last name uh, and uh, middle initial suffix prefix everything is sent in PID 5 and then PID 7 is uh, date of birth date of birth of patient will be sent in PID 7 and PID 8 is gender we send the gender information in PID 8 so basically as we are seeing this will include all the basic demographic details of of any patient however as i said the ones that are highlighted in green that are the common fields of uh, discussion when we are discussing during the real-time interface implementation so please uh, do try to memorize them uh, memorize them while you are uh, going through this so next is the PID 10. PID 10 is raised value. So we do send the raised information in PID 10 and then PID 11, which is patient address. So you will see both mailing address as well as uh, the email address in PID 11. Then in PID 13, we have the phone number and PID 14 has business phone number. So now we will talk about the repetition characters that we have discussed during uh, our uh, first session where I was talking about message delimiters. So in message delimiters, there, is, there was one symbol which looked like an inverted S. So that was representing a repetition character in the HL7 message. What does a repetition character mean? First, we need to understand that. Let us say, now we are dealing with phone number patients home phone number right PID 13 represents patients home phone number so let us suppose patient has two different phone numbers primary phone number and secondary phone number both are patients home phone number only there is no work phone number as of now so in this scenario the PM software has two placeholders one for storing patient primary phone number second one is for storing patient secondary phone number and there is another field altogether which is storing patient work phone number apparently they are connecting two they are collecting two phone numbers if patient has them and storing it in their software so when we generate an ADT message it becomes essential that we have to send both the phone numbers in the HL7 message so when we need to send both the phone numbers in HL7 message, how do we send them? Because we have only one field called as patient home phone number in PID 13, which is actually sending the patient phone number information over. But it can hold only one patient number. It cannot hold multiple patient numbers. That is where the repetition character, uh, an inverted S, uh, will come into picture. How it would look like? It would look like this one inverted s this is called as tilde uh, which is present on your uh, on your keyboard you will see that just just next to the number one uh, on the top left corner you will see this symbol on the key so this is called as tilde this is used for sending a repetitive value in an hl7 message what does that mean PID 13, this is PID 13, field number 13, okay? So in PID 13, let me word wrap this one. So this is PID segment and this phone number field that you are seeing is PID 13. So as I said, we had, we have to send the uh, patient phone number in this field. And if we have two phone numbers, then what we do is, we add a repetition symbol in the HL7 message and then send the secondary phone number in, in that particular field itself. Okay, so this is the secondary phone number that we are seeing. This is the primary phone number. And when reading the message, when counting the fields, then at that point of time we do consider this one as PID 13 and this is also PID 13 so what is happening whenever you are using a tilde 
it means that it is virtually adding two pipes not physically but virtually adding two pipes and this is considered as PID 13 this is also considered as PID 13 it is literally saying that there is a repetition value within this particular field and both of them represent PID 13 itself usually what we do we count it as this is PID 12 this entire thing is PID 13 14 15 16 and so on right but when we have a repetition symbol then this is considered as PID 13 this is also considered as PID 13 let's look at the um, Yeah, so this is one example where we can see that PID 13 can be used and another field you are seeing this one here the patient address PID 11 So there are two types of addresses which we use usually right one is mailing address other one is email address one is for physical mail and the other one is for electronic mail So this is the only location where you can send the patient address. We don't have any other location or any other placeholder within HL7 where we can send the patient address as well as email address so we are seeing here we have again a repetition character here so the first part of PID 11 indicates patient mailing address second part indicates its patient's email address again this is also PID 11 this is also PID 11 okay we don't consider them as two different segments uh, two different fields they both are considered as one field only okay so you will see these kind of relative uh, fields where you will have more than two types of uh, two data elements of the same type embedded within one field and they use a repetition character there in order to represent uh, that this is a repetitive field Next we have PID 15 which is to uh, send over the patient's primary language and then we have PID 16 which is to uh, communicate about marital status of the patient and then we have PID 19 which is to send uh, SSN number so these are pretty straightforward PID 22 is ethnic group they do send the ethnic group in PID 22 Next we have PID 29 which is patient death date and time in case a patient is deceased then we do send that information in 29 and also the death indicator whether patient is alive or dead in PID 30. So this is usually used when we discharge a patient so they do send this information to downstream system so that they get notified about uh, patient uh, status. And the next we have PV1 segment. So PV1 is patient visit segment. So what is the patient visit segment? Whenever we have uh, some visits related information, usually patient is visit, going to visit the hospital just to get an appointment, right? So when they visit for the first time, that is when we do capture all of this information one by one, right? So patient visit segment has little significance and uh, there is a lot of difference because a lot of difference between pu and segments and is and its uh, location in an hl7 message for example pu and segment is present in an edt message and pu and segment is also present in an appointment message so when we talk from appointment perspective the fields the nature of the fields will change a little and when we talk from PV1 uh, segment for a demographic message perspective the nature of the fields will be different so we'll talk about the differences when we when we are going through the appointment related messages for now we'll see or look at it from demographic perspective itself okay so PV1 2 PV1 1 is again set ID 
PV12 is a patient class, which is nothing but whether a patient is an inpatient or an outpatient is indicated in PV12 or an emergency visit is indicated in PID2. Then PID3 is assigned patient location. So usually we do have uh, we do have the locations where the patient is getting registered, right? Let us take up a scenario. Um, let me bring up the drawing tool. So let us take up a scenario where we have uh, give me one second. All right, so let us take up a scenario where we have. 1 p.m. system uh, more than 1 p.m. system this is p.m. 1 this is p.m. 2 this is p.m. 3 okay each of them are present at different location and all of these are interfacing with one EHR system. Okay. Which means for this hospital, so for this hospital, this hospital has individual locations in the entire city. Okay, there are clinics there are various locations uh, where they might have small hospital however ehr which is being used at these clinics or hospitals has one single data repository but pm softwares are different okay so at that point of time we'll see that patients whoever is getting registered in pm systems will be sent over to the ehr system which is a single database repository Okay, all of them will send the data to the EHR system. So when all of these individual PM systems are sending data to the EHR system, patient demographics get registered in the EHR system. So in this case, it plays an important role to figure out where the patient got registered. Okay, so whether it is from location one, location two or location three, the understanding that really becomes important. So for to satisfy that purpose, when we send out a demographic message, PV13 sends patients assigned location information, uh, which can be received by the HR system and then imported into the gets imported into the HR system about the location information. And that is where assigned patient location will play major role. Then we have PV17, which is attending doctor where we will be seeing that we are sending attending doctor information uh, basically this is a primary care physician primary care physician information will be sent in pv17 pv18 has a referring doctor so in case of some of some doctor is referring this patient to a different hospital structure or not hospital structure but different hospital then that doctor's information is written in PV18. Then PV19 is the visit number. We'll come back to this when we are talking about an appointment message. Um, PV144 and 45 indicates admit date and time and discharge date and time in case of a demographic message. Okay, if the patient is getting registered, at what time he got registered, what time he got admitted those details are say, sent in PV144. The next segment that we have is guarantor segment. So when we are talking about a guarantor segment, we need to understand little workflow of how we deal with real-time uh, interfaces or real-time uh, workflows. Okay, so let us say I am I'm going to a hospital 
and I have an insurance on my name so I am the actual subscriber and uh, the insurance company is going to pay whatever I incur it whatever charges I incur at the hospital so at that point of time as I am bearing the insurance I will be the guarantor for myself so in such situations we'll see that patient himself is the guarantor okay this is one scenario let us take second scenario which is uh, I have a family and I'm taking my child to hospital and uh, uh, the insurance that I have is a family insurance it is going to cover the entire family at that point of time patient information in PID segment is will be related to the child which means it will have child's name it will have child's uh, date of birth child's gender and so on however the guarantor will be my name because i am going to be the guarantor for the child and uh, child is going to subscribe or uh, basically they are going to get the insurance from the insurance which is mainly on my name as i am being the father of that particular child okay so these are the two different scenarios uh, where you will see different information guarantor segment if patient himself is the guarantor you will see patient id segment pid segment and uh, gt1 segment having the same name but in case if patient is a child then father's name will be represented in gt1 so this applies across everything wherever someone is uh, drawing their insurances from some other person you will see that patient name is different and guarantor name is different okay so with guarantor segment we have gt1 which is set id again if we have multiple guarantors then we will have guarantor information sent uh, then we have uh, the sequence id of the guarantors segments represented in set id next we have uh, gt12 which is guarantor number so each and every guarantor who is getting registered within the system everyone will have their own guarantor number assigned or generated by the system it is same like the patient id number which gets generated whenever we register any patient in the pm system then we have gt13 which is guarantor name uh, same like patient name guarantor name is present here and then gt16 we have guarantor phone number and uh, which is home phone number and gt17 is for business phone number and then gt18 we have uh, date of birth gt19 represents gender so gt11 represents guarantor relationship so as i said in the example that we were discussing where we have a uh, family billing concept we definitely will have the guarantor is a different name from the patient because patient himself isn't a guarantor so at that point of time explaining the relation of that guarantor or indicating what is the relation of the guarantor with that particular patient is important so gt111 takes that responsibility of communicating what is the relationship between the guarantor and the patient so it will uh, it might have the values of spouse child or grandparent or grandchild uh, and all of that uh, relating uh, relate relationship uh, values all of those relationship values will be sent in gt111 which primarily indicates what is the relationship between the parent and the guarantor okay and gt113 guarantor date begin date and end date these are also very very important especially from insurance perspective um, because they clearly need to determine uh, the time period of the guarantor so that they can ensure that they are generating the claims within that time period and don't miss on the claims so which is why they do capture the validity of the guarantor in the pm system and when they when a demographic message is generated from the pm system that information uh, will be sent in gt113 and gt114 similarly gt124 and 25 indicates guarantor death date and time so it is very much essential to understand whether uh, the guarantor is still alive or not 
um, so if they are deceased that information will also be sent in GT124 and 25 so that EHR or any other downstream systems can get updated that uh, that particular person whoever was the guarantor is n is not the guarantor for the patient anymore So this will save them from uh, Making sure that they are having the right information for the purposes of billing Next we have the next segment which is uh, IN1 so IN1 as the name itself suggests it is going to send insurance related information over to the downline systems so if you look at this one uh, we usually have uh, more than one insurances for the patient okay so for each and every insurance the set id will uh, represent the sequence number so IN1 1 mm. might show 1 oh, might will show the sequence number 1 by 1 so in um, in most of the scenarios you will see that we have multiple insurances not just one of them and IN12 represents the plan ID so each and every insurance plan has their own ID right uh, so that plan ID will be sent in IN12 IN13 will have the company ID and 4 will have the company name So this will represent what is the insurance company who is owning that insurance company and all uh, Not who is owning the insurance company. Sorry about that uh, It will show who uh, what is the company ID and what is the company name and company address in IN15 Then we have IN18 and 9 which represent the group number so insurances will have group numbers as well so that group number and what is the group name is indicated in IN18 and 9 Next IN13 indicates a plan effective date uh, So it will let us know the start date and end date of any insurances the, As we know that information is very very important even when we deal with uh, Even when we usually deal with uh, any vehicle insurance or patient health insurance start and end date play a major role right so that start and end date is sent in pid uh, in in1 12 and 13. next we have a uh, plan type being sent in in115 so that will indicate what is the type of the plan that the patient has in117 is uh, is going to indicate insurance relationship to the patient so this is again same like what we have seen earlier in the guarantor segment so in the guarantor segment we did see that uh, we have guarantors relationship to the patient right that same value is will be seen here as well so it can be spouse it can be uh, it can be spouse, it can be child, it can be uh, grand grandparent or grandchild or guardian or anything. So this insurance uh, relation, insurance relationship is is also very very important. As I said, it plays a major role. The next we have uh, insurance date of birth and insurance address. Uh, which is pretty straightforward and next we have uh, I know 36 is the policy number so each and every insurance guy who is going to get registered will have uh, a policy number right registered with the insurance company they do have the policy number so that policy number is present here Next we have IN47 which is to send coverage type um, So we'll see that we will have the coverage type. What is coverage type? So usually coverage type is nothing but what type of in what type of diseases are covered what type of problems are covered within that insurance plan Which patient is bearing 
whether it is hospital or whether it is physician or whether it is a dental or whether it is pharmacy related coverage so that coverage type is present in IN147 they clearly indicate what type of coverage is present for the patient based on that uh, hospitals can take a call whether to whether to save uh, whether to sorry not save but whether to um, allow the patient for specific appointment or not so they will they will decide based on the insurances if the patient says that insurance is going to cover everything so that concludes about the uh, in one segment so we are done with the first message type which is for us to deal with an ADT A04 or A08 demographic message or it can be A28 or A31. These are the five or uh, six major segments you, which you will be seeing in an HL7 message. Apart from this, you might also be seeing some other segments which is IN2 which will contain some additional insurance related information but you don't you might not see it very frequently and uh, another segment that you might see in a demographic message is nt1 nt segment what is an nt segment an nt segment is a note segment where uh, we will be sending some notes related information some additional comments related information in nt segment uh, usually you don't see that in a demographic message but nt segments can be present anywhere whether it is demographic message appointment message charge related message or anything very significantly you will see it in an in a result message orders and results interfaces when we are dealing with that that is where we will be seeing more of nte segments okay so any any questions with the demographic message type guys here we have an optional sir, like uh, o r required optional or w c correct what is the difference it means optional and required is clear but w c okay so all right i you were you you were there in yesterday's session yes yes okay all right no problem i i think i explained it yesterday uh, with w is withdrawn okay okay which means it is not being used in this particular version of hl7 uh, so far uh, going forward right now the specifications that i lined out are of version 2.7 so in version 2.7 if we see w that particular uh, seg that particular field is uh, no more being used okay 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 and uh, you will also see b b is backward compatibility mm -hmm. okay so if you see something as b then it is saying that this field is retained to have backward compatibility with other fields okay. with other versions yeah. of hl7 mm -hmm. the earlier versions 2.5 2.3 and all okay another one you will see is c c is conditionally required which means the importance of this field depends on some other field so if some other field is present then we might have to definitely send a certain value in fields wherever we have c so based on the type of the message based on the condition and scenario we might use c we might see c in the uh hl7 specification fields yeah. conditional required and other two are known anyways r is required yeah yeah and uh, o is optional fine okay fine yeah. uh yeah any other questions guys <clears throat> all right so i think we are good so we'll conclude today's session here tomorrow we will be taking a look at uh, the appointment related messages what are the appointment related messages and the importance of the segments and fields in an appointment message okay so thank you so much guys we'll catch up tomorrow tomorrow morning at the same time
Okay, thank you. This length is a fixed one, means this is a... Which one, a this fixed one? for the version, yeah, the length, length of yes. the fields. Yes, it is fixed for the version. Okay. Okay, so in case if it, if there is no value uh, for mm -hmm. length, it, if it is zero, it means that it free, can be it, unlimited. Uh, it can, it unlimited. Is a free you can send anything, but if it defines a number, then it has to follow that rule of having only so many number of characters as per the definition here. Okay. Okay, for example, if a message 15 says two, which means you have mm -hmm. to send a value of only two characters, not more than two characters. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, you all have a good day. We catch up tomorrow morning again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.